Welcome, everyone. The sports writers are here from the Salem News. Matt Williams, Nick Giannino. I'm Bill Newell with MSO News Sports, and I believe we'll be hearing from Phil Stacy. He'll be joining us in just a few moments as we uh, record on a on a now Tuesday evening. Uh, and gentlemen, here we are. It's not raining. This is unbelievable. Uh, albeit inside. So uh, let's talk some high school football. And uh, Nick, I'll just dive it dive down to you here, and uh, you know maybe tell us where you were at. You were at the Salem game last uh, Friday night, and uh, Give me a take on the witches, uh, how they look here in 2023. Well, uh, first game, they looked great. You know, um, talking to head coach Matt Bouchard heading into the year, uh, he knew they had a pretty good group, obviously made the playoffs last year, had a had a solid team, brought back a lot of those guys. Um, they really took it to Arlington. They beat them 51 to 26, I think was the final, but they scored all 51 of those points in the first half. It was a rout. Uh, they played their backups in the second half. and. Yeah, I was impressed. I thought uh, Corey Grimes looked really good under center. A uh, big quarterback there that obviously started for them last year. He had some nice touchdown passes uh, to Quinn Rocco Ryan, who had a great game. Uh, yeah, Grimes was six for eight, I think, for well over 100, close to 200 yards passing. Didn't play in the second half. Um, so he was effective. He was efficient. Quinn Rocco Ryan showed off his uh, his speed and got out and broke some plays open for him. Uh, Devontae Ozuna ran the ball well in the backfield and I thought their offensive line held up pretty good against um, you know a pretty big Arlington line that seemed to be uh, going in one of their strengths so that was encouraging uh, and defensively they really limited Arlington they had four interceptions and a fumble recovery Elias Vasquez uh, jumped on a fumble after a quarterback sack and, and ran into the house from like 45 yards out so that was a great play um, I think the only real area of concern for them was the the kickoffs. You know, special teams, they they let up, I think, two kickoff return touchdowns, which, you know, one is one thing, but to, to have two, you know, you're probably doing something wrong there. Um, just seemed like there was a little bit, a little too many gaps uh, on the kickoff returns. But Bouchard was well aware of it, and it didn't hurt them this time. It's something that I'm sure they're going to be working on moving forward. Obviously, Corey Grimes, uh, their quarterback, does the kicking for them, too. So, um, and it wasn't really on him. I thought his kicks were okay, you know, but uh, they need to figure a little bit something out on the attack there defensively, special teams wise. But other than that, yeah, they look great. I think they're going to be uh, be able to compete at a high level in the NEC this year. Well, they certainly are going to be tested this uh, Friday night when they play host to Danvers, a yep. team that went to Tewksbury and lost just by one touchdown there. Uh, always a tough Merrimack Valley opponent for sure. Right. Matt, you were uh, you were you uh, covered Peabody, right? Again, uh, Friday nights. That's right. Yeah, huge, huge and, and game it, for Salem uh, on Friday. That that's really the game of the week this week. I, I think. I mean, you know, I I think that um, people are impressed with Salem, but I I sense a little bit of cautiousness with that. You know, it's like kind of similar to last year when Salem started out hot and it was like, ah, who have they beat, right? And then. You know, they played Masco, they lost pretty good. They they played Danvers in those non-playoff games and they and they took it on the chin a little bit. So, you know, if I'm Salem, I, I look at this as an opportunity to really silence those doubters, um, you know, because it, it's a really interesting game against a Danvers team that is pretty good on paper too, you know, and, and big up front. But Salem's kind of been, you know, targeting this season for a long time as as the season where they were going to make some noise. They they certainly have all the pieces in place, and so I I look at that as as an awesome game to watch. And um, you know, Salem I think can can kind of harness that underdog mentality. I mean, you drop fifty one points in your opener, and and you're still going into week two as an underdog. Uh, you know, I, I think that's really something that Salem maybe might be able to build on. And and you know, I mean, Arlington's not great. Like you know, this isn't the GBL champions in the nineties, but I mean, it's better than the teams that Salem played a year ago, right? Like, I mean, this wasn't Chelsea that they dropped 51 on. Um, this was a, a dual County league team. So, um, and like I said, I, I mean, they, they, they could have scored far more points in that in the second half if they left the starters in. it was just, the game was over at that point. I, I am impressed by Salem and I'm, I'm really interested to see what they can do against Danvers. And, and I think Danvers certainly is, is hungry to do a little bit more offensively and, and Danvers is always very difficult defensively. So I, I think that's a real, I mean, I was fascinated by that game when it came on the schedule last November. And I absolutely love that these two teams have scheduled each other here 
in the regular season portion of the season this year. I, I think it's going to be a great take. Uh, uh, you know, for me, when I look at the schedule, it's definitely the game of the week. And, and just to segue, Bill, you asked about Peabody. I, I think the second best game on the slate for Friday is Peabody and Classical. Uh, you know, I, I think Classical is a team that's under the radar a little bit. Uh, especially with Brian Vaughn back at quarterback. He, he's as slippery as they come, as quick as they come, as tough as they come. Uh, you know, if Peabody doesn't mind its P's and Q's and it's contained on defense, he's a guy that can really, really hurt you. And uh, so, so I look at that as a really interesting game uh, between two big programs with, with, you know, a lot of size up front. And, uh, you know, I, I think Classical is probably a little bit better than than people realize, you know, especially since they've moved to the GPL, like, you know, people uh, in our greater area, you know, there's not as many crossover games. People don't pay attention to them as much, but uh, they were a playoff team last year. And I think they're going to be a tough test for the Tanners. Just jumping back, Nick, to Salem for a moment. It seems to me, I saw their scrimmage against Brewer, the Brewer witches are saw part of it. Uh, it, I mean, I get the sense that, you know, they have a lot of the, the weapons back from last year that they had last year back for this year's team, but maybe even a few more and, and bigger numbers on the sidelines as well. So it seems like they've got a little a push of enthusiasm there as well for the program, yeah. which is great to see. Well, yeah, you mentioned the numbers. You can definitely see just by looking at the sidelines. They had maybe double the amount of players that, that Arlington had. Um, so definitely a good turnout for the program this year. I don't know what the final numbers were, but – had to be in the 40s somewhere, probably, right, Willie? Uh, yeah, I probably had to guess. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, yeah. yeah, and and you mentioned, you know, some of the skill players. We we talked about Ozuna. Obviously, he's their lead back, and Quinn Rock Ryan's going to be doing a little bit of everything for him. But yeah. Albert Pujols had a nice game. Um, you know, wide receiver Logan Abood caught a, I think, a 45 yard touchdown, something like that. So they got other kids that can uh, get the windows open here. And get, cars going by um <laughs> they got other guys that can make plays so uh, they got some options offensively and uh we'll see again if they can kind of clean up a few of those special teams things and keep the defense uh motoring away that they're, they're going to be in good shape i know phil who is not here was with me i was at uh, marblehead last friday night when uh, marblehead took on bishop fenwick had the lead but then fenwick came back and, and had and got the game got the w in the game with bryce lehman injured his uh, knee popped out they popped it back in, but he never went back into the game. So I don't know what his status is moving forward for uh, Fenwick. But uh, if it if it's what it sounded like it was on Friday night, maybe he could be back uh, in another week or so or something like that. But uh, we'll wait and see on that. But they did it without Bryce um, Lehman. And uh, so anyways, that's um, that's a note there on that game. But uh, so Marblehead's got to regroup. And, you know, King Phillip. Matt, what do we know about them? I know they had a big win their first game, uh, a large win, if you will. But they're, Yeah, they're, they're, they're big, they're strong, they're mean. They're a Super Bowl team that's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Catholic Memorial twice, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, not uh, not the team you want to be welcoming in to, uh, you know, to Piper Field uh, on the heels of a tough uh, opening uh, day uh, situation there. I mean, that that is kudos to Marblehead for scheduling them. Uh, you know, but that is as tough a team out. Uh, that's as tough a public school team as there is in the entire state of Massachusetts. Uh, so that's certainly a tall order for the magicians. You know, Matt, can I change my pick that I had in the uh, football uh, <laughs> uh, things for this week? I know that uh, I, I submitted them early here and I, uh, I, I, Hey, I'm with you, Bill. I, I picked Marblehead as well. So I'm going to stick with it. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Believe, well, I'm definitely uh, having some second thoughts. So. I, I He's making King uh, Philip sound pretty good, though. I'll tell you. <laughs> I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Scott Zolak was at one time affiliated or or a part time assistant coach or something for King Philip. So you, you oh, know, wow. if these picks make their way to the sports hub. Uh, you guys might get blasted on the air or something. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have to pick again. We don't have yeah, to pick, actually. Uh, we don't have to pick the Brockton game, so we don't have to worry about Wiggy this year. I know he, yeah, he got yeah, a yeah, tough opening. That's fair. I knew I would anymore. be I knew I would be embarrassed with these picks, but it and I thought it could be sooner. But you know, if it's week two before I get hammered, uh, okay, fine. But uh, <laughs> who knows? As uh, long as we offend the celebrities, that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Matt, anything else? I mean, I got to ask you, Matt. You were at the um, Endicott game uh, as well. Endicott College, one and one. They lost to Ithaca. Um, Luke Connolly in town with his uh, Ithaca team. 
uh, on Saturday afternoon. And I know this Endicott is really trying to kick up their schedule, you know, and play some tough opponents. They got a tough one this week on the road at Maritime down in New York, um, which I understand is right in the Bronx, Bronx rather area of New York, obviously on the ocean there. But uh, uh, I actually had not heard of that school, but it's a very good football program that uh, mm-hmm. the Endicott will be playing at noon uh, on Saturday. But uh, but you got a chance to uh, to see them. Uh, and I watched the game on uh, on the screen, if you will. And uh, uh, I, it was an amazing, very similar to the Patriots game in the sense how they got down so early, came back had the lead, but just couldn't put it away against the, an 18th ranked team in the nation in division three, Ithaca. Great, great football game. I mean, great fourth quarter. It, it was, it was almost uh, a little bit like the Patriots game. And and for Ithaca, it was a little bit like a, like a Tom Brady game. Like they got down 10 in the fourth quarter and then they just kind of snapped their fingers, score, stop, score. And then Endicott missed the game tying field goal from 48 yards, which is, you know, obviously a really tough kick for a college kid. Um, you know, they got the ball back less than two minutes or maybe right around two minutes. Had three timeouts. I, I thought that quarterback, Clay Marenghi, did a really good job of managing that situation, mixing pass and run, not panicking and trying to take too many deep shots and, and you know, getting his team into position to uh, to try that game-tying field goal. But, uh, you know, wasn't meant to be, but uh, was, was a great finish. Just just a great football game and um you know, Ithaca a team that went to the national semifinals a year ago and, and that Endicott was hoping to play in the second round of those playoffs. Right. Unfortunately, they, they were upset at home by Springfield. But, um, you know, kudos to Coach McGonigal, Paul, over there at Endicott. I mean, he's looking to ratchet up the schedule and get teams like Endic- uh, like Ithaca and, and like Maritime. And I think they have a team from Texas coming in the following week to Endicott uh, College for a home game. So they're, they're trying to prepare for, for those games late in the season. Uh, so that they don't get upset in the playoffs. I mean, they've been upset in the playoffs two years in a row, and so they wanted to make things a lot more difficult. And, um, you know, that's the balance, right? You're, you're really disappointed that you didn't finish the game out and, and figure out a way to win. I mean, you know, they, they really needed to get a first down or two on the uh, drive after Ithaca's first touchdown made, made it a, a three-point game, and they just weren't able to do it. You know, they had a bobbled snap. And uh, Marenghi bent down to pick it up and his knee hit the ground and they blew it dead, which I thought was only in high school. I didn't think that was an NCAA rule, but but I guess it is. So just a really bad break there. Now all of a sudden you're behind the sticks and, and you're punting. And and so just kind of bad luck there uh, for Endicott. I mean, I think they look at that drive and say, geez, if we had gotten the job done and gotten a couple of first downs, we could probably close out this win. Um, but at the same time, so many positives to take. You went toe-to-toe with a ranked team and – show that you belong and you know it's early in the season so you can't uh you know you can't hang your head and quit just because you had one bad quarter right in September so uh, I think there's a little bit of dichotomy there for Endicott you know both both licking their wounds a little bit and saying geez we really had this game and and also saying well we we're a pretty good football team and we got to carry this forward the next you know 10-11 weeks you know Matt there's two things that jump out to me they went, did they go down 10 nothing? They went down seven nothing. Yeah, on the first, it was only first possession interception. Then they go down 10 nothing and they battle back. They actually take the lead. And, you know, you were mentioning how they had a chance to, they attempted the field goal late to try to tie the game. They wouldn't have been able to do that if they didn't block one of Ithaca's point after kicks in mm-hmm. the game to put them in that situation. In other words, another, if that hadn't happened, they would have been down four coming down the stretch there, not just three. So they made Correct. they made some huge plays in that game, and I'm not taking anything away from Ithaca, but no, they're they a great did. team. I think yeah. I think you saw two incredible defenses, yeah, and both quarterbacks had to work for it. But I think you saw why both quarterbacks have had a lot of all conference accolades because they both took the adversity at different times and then came back and made plays. You know, Marenghi, the early pick, comes back, gets his team in the lead, uh, you know, Wingfield, the all American for Ithaca, you know, kind of had a really tough second and third quarter. Endicott was smothering him, was kind of all over the place, comes back and and battles back in the fourth. So I think both quarterbacks really showed their medal uh, in this one, as far as, you know, facing down elite defenses for parts of the game and, and not crumbling and, and bouncing back and making plays. It, it was a real back and forth uh, heavyweight fight type game. It was a great game. I mean, I think, you know, they've been getting really good crowds over there. I, I've been to both games so far this year, and I think it was 25, 2600 for the opener and around 2100 
uh, this past Saturday. It's a really lively place and it, it's really good football. I, I recommend it to anybody. If, you know, if there's not a Saturday high school game to watch, uh, uh, you know, head over to Endicott. It, it's great football. It, it's a lot of fun. I, 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 I find it to be very enjoyable. And, and um, Matt, it's not just because they have a few tanners on the uh, team, is it? Is That's not why you're going over there, is it? I think they have more Masco chieftains than they have tanners, yeah. so whatever that's okay. worth. Um, yeah. You know, that that's that's just, I, I think, by the numbers, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a fact these days. All right. Uh, you guys, any, you want to make an observation at all on the Cape Ann League? Anything you guys saw? We Essex Tech got into the uh, Cape Ann League, opened up, lost at Newburyport on, um, over the weekend, and... Uh, and they'll be back at it again this week. But any any other notes from the Cape? It's so early, but maybe we should move on to a couple other topics. I mean, nice to see Gloucester get a win. I know that, you know, they've had yeah. some hard times lately. So nice nice to see them get a win. Um, I, I think we've got our eyes on St. John's and Central Catholic on Saturday. Certainly that's, you know, too early season and a good chance they're going to meet again in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, that that's a heavyweight fight that's a little bit under the radar too. That That's what we've got our eyes on. And good win for uh, my alma mater there, Pentucket, opening up on their brand new field under the lights. You know, I'm sorry they had yeah. to do it to Tim Fryermuth and the Generals of Hamilton Wenham, but tough one for the Gens. Yeah, great absolutely. win nonetheless for them. Uh, opening up, I think it was their first home game in four years, and probably their yeah. first time ever under the lights. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, uh, you know, that's that's definitely exciting. There were some good matchups last week, obviously some great matchups. And Matt, thanks for mentioning the prep thing. That's a Saturday afternoon, one thirty game as of now. And uh, I don't know if uh, Lee, the uh, hurricane will impact anything over the weekend, but apparently we're Friday night still uh, looking pretty good. So uh, but good. we're not we're not weathermen. Uh, we just our, our business is forecasting these games as best as anyone can, I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Nice. Well played. Uh, Nick, uh, why don't you, uh, give us a couple of soccer updates or golf? Uh, let's just, uh, j jump in with a couple of other subject areas here. Sure. Sure. Well, I, I did want to uh, mention on the golf front and this is not high school golf, which we are in, in full swing with the high school golf season. Obviously they started, you know, a week earlier than all the other sports. Um, so we're starting to see kind of who are going to be the good teams there, but uh, Nick Macario, who you've probably seen in our paper time and time again for his, uh, you know, prowess on the amateur circuit. He was a St. John's prep graduate in, I think, 2010. So he's probably, what, 30, 31, 32, somewhere around there. He's competing in the U.S. mid-amateur tournament, which is, uh, you know, the highest level of amateur golf you can really play or mid-amateur golf, which is, don't quote me on it, but I think it's you have to be 25 or older to compete. You have to have the amateur status um so a certain handicap there and it's players from all around the world uh it's a big event it's up in new york again it's called the u.s mid amateur and he made the cut pretty easily i think close to 200 golfers competing in that he was minus two finished in a tie for 16th to make the cut into the uh 64 man match play bracket it kind of works the same way as a regular u.s amateur tournament would work or the mass amateur or any of those big tournaments um, so you get this, you get the stroke play for a couple of days and then the top 64 guys advance into the match play bracket and he qualified and then he, uh, he advanced through his first two rounds. So he's one of 16 golfers left in the tournament, which is uh, pretty remarkable. And he's the only golfer from Massachusetts left. Um, when I only think there was a few golfers from Massachusetts actually that made the, the tournament in the first place. So. Cool stuff for Nick Macario. That's uh, that's up in New York at Sleepy Hollow. I think it's Scarborough, New York. So we'll be following him the rest of the week. He's going to be teeing off 7 a.m. on Wednesday morning in the round of 16. Um, and then just to tie that in right with St. John's Prep Golf, uh, you know, did they win it last year. They were reigning champs, right? Um, they're back and, and they're stacked. I've uh, been following their scores early on, haven't got out into any matches yet but they got a full 10 guys that can all score under 40 for nine holes which is pretty impressive I think they they did just that all their guys shot in the 30s for nine holes in a recent win they have a freshman that was firing like a two under par um so yeah stack team at St. John's Prep um we go down the line I think the NEC is really competitive this year you know Mass goes off to a good start Beverly's off to a good start Danvers has a pretty good team uh, Gloucester's been battling 
So that's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. A lot of those teams will probably advance to the uh, sectional tournament here at the end of October. Um, so it's been fun, you know, a couple of weeks in with the golf and, and we got some good golf players this year. Matt, do you have anything you want to share with us other than football, as we've been talking about uh, anything, any updates that you've been, I know you've been following a lot of things here in the last week or so. Well, we've had some good soccer so far. You know, Masco is uh, off to a great start. They're three and zero. Already won the Clash of the Titans last week against the Danvers, uh, four to two, and it certainly looks like uh, Georgia Prouty at Danvers and Lauren Bowner of Masco are the two uh, top forwards in the league in the region. Uh, you know, just off to hot scoring starts. Georgia's got ten uh, ten points already, and and Lauren's got six. Uh, both are uh, passing more than they did a year ago, you know, get big assist totals and their teammates are certainly reaping the rewards there. So those two teams, uh, as usual, we're, we're having a lot of hat tricks early in the year. I know Mecky O'Neill from uh, Rockport had a hat trick and, um, you know, Rock, I'm sorry, Manchester Essex. Uh, Mecky from Manchester Essex had a hat trick. They're undefeated, haven't allowed a goal yet. Hamilton Wenham undefeated, hasn't allowed a goal yet. They had two hat tricks today, one by Lily Mark, one from Tessa Hunt. And uh, Kayla Scanella, Masco, and Allie Benton, Corda Peabody also have hat tricks already. So it's been a week of games, and we got that many Hatties. Uh, that that's pretty uh, that's pretty rare. I feel like that that seems like a lot more than we had last year uh, for the whole season. Never mind, uh, you know, after like six or seven days. What do we attribute that to, Matt? I mean, that's a, it's, I, I just I hardly ever hear of a hat trick in soccer, high school soccer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or well, any soccer. It's... Maybe maybe it's like uh, the NFL uh, preseason. These defenses that uh, just aren't ready to go. <laughs> maybe, is the ball maybe maybe the ball's overinflated, Matt? I mean, well, well, that do... I'm not. We're not going to go down that road. But we're not. Uh, okay. You know, as, as we know, these nets are quite large. Uh, you know, but I don't want to get into any deflate gate talk here. That that could be, uh, you know, that could be misinterpreted by uh, some of the folks out there that uh, that don't understand that we're making light of things. Nick, you're a, you're a, you're you're the soccer guy too. Uh, I mean, overinflated ball would that do it? Uh, I don't know, you know, but it hasn't crossed my mind. But I guess there's potential there. Yeah, absolutely right. Or else uh, we wouldn't be talking about it here on this podcast for sure. Yeah, um, I'll close. I got to uh, let's just uh, get you guys to weigh in on the Patriots week one uh, against uh, the Eagles. A loss, but I'll tell you, I thought. Uh, I thought Mac Jones after the beginning of the game was throwing passes. He was he threw some really nice passes in that game. Passes that if they were Tom Brady, I would say, "Oh, that's good." But it, when they're Mac Jones, you're thinking, "Oh my gosh, that almost could get could have gotten picked off, but they didn't." Uh, you know, you know, uh, so I I overall thought they there were some pluses there, but I know Belichick wasn't too happy after the game, but like like what they did with Endicott, I mean, they competed and they made it a game when a lot of folks didn't even think that would be possible, I think. Yeah. I, I think Willie will probably be a little more critical, but I, I was encouraged with what I saw. Um, you know, really tough start, obviously. I think with the Brady thing going on and Mac Jones probably feeling a little bit of the pressure, you know, not great weather, whatever, whatever the circumstances right. might be. It wasn't wasn't a good start for them, but they uh they never quit. And Mac, um, yeah, I thought he played very well in that second half. You know, what do you have? Three touchdowns, well over three hundred mm -hmm. yards. Yeah, had some had some good plays where he was scrambling. So encouraging, uh, you know, it's not a win, but it's something to build on. I mean, Philly's obviously going to be uh, one of the top teams in the NFC once again. You know, a lot of people have picked them to go back to the Super Bowl. So it doesn't get any easier for the Patriots. But I think uh, overall, a pretty encouraging start. And I'll tell you, I really liked uh, what I saw from Kendrick Bourne. This is what we were hoping for last season with him kind of just they didn't use him the right way, I guess. And I don't know, with Bill O'Brien back, they they let Max sling it a little bit more, opened up the field a little bit more, and Bourne looked great as that number one. So he's going to get Devontae Parker back alongside him eventually. We don't know what he'll bring, but, um, yeah, I like what I saw from him. Matt? And the defense, I should add, and the defense. Yeah, defense right. Yeah. Well. yeah, exactly, yeah. I, I thought it was good. I mean, I, you know, you don't realize that um... – you know that 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 um you know by the end of the game he had 316 yards passing i mean they, you know they, they attempted 54 passes which is like brady like right um you yeah. know I, I remember that insane statistic 
uh, you know, from a few years ago that, that Brady was like, you know, had like an 80% winning percentage or 90% when attempting more than 50 passes. And like every other quarterback that ever lived was only like 10%, you know, because usually when you attempt that many passes, it means you're down in the game. Right. So, um, I thought it was interesting that they opened it up so much. I thought it was a little discouraging that they didn't really run the ball like at all. Um, you know, I'm assuming that, you know, between Stevenson and Elliott, they're going to have a little bit more success and a little bit more balance. And if they can add those elements and Jones is still going to throw for 300 yards a game and instead of, you know, the one 200 he was doing last year, like that, then they might have something. I mean, that, that's, that might not be so bad. Um, you know, I, again, I'd like to see a little more balance. I didn't think they managed the end of the game very well. I mean, you know, the punt on the, 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 the going for it on the fourth and 17 and, mm. and you know, not going for the field goal a little bit before that. I mean, this is how they used to beat teams is, is by really managing the fourth quarter well. And, and I thought they managed it poorly. I, it was, you know, uh, Coach Belichick's like lack of explanation on that is is kind of par for the course, but frustrating. It, it's like, you know, yeah, we thought it was best for the team. You know, there was six minutes left. It's like, well, there were nine minutes left. And, you know, why don't you tell us why it was best for the team? Every coach, you know, that does a dunderheaded thing, at the moment in time thought it was best for the team. You know, the, the moment a coach goes up there and says, yeah, I knew it was terrible for the team, but I did it anyway. Right. That's going to be breaking news. Like we all know you thought it was best for the team. Can you tell us why, you know, so we can maybe learn something about the game of football from a guy that's so smart. Um, You, you know, so I thought that was a little frustrating too, but uh, overall encouraging. I mean, you know, the first quarter, I almost turned it off. I thought they were going to get blown out. So yeah. uh, to make a game of it, I mean, I know we're not into moral victories in the NFL, but um you know, it was it was good. I thought overall, uh, I think you have to come away encouraged. And you know, with the Jets losing Rodgers, right? Like you got to figure maybe you know a split or two losses to the Jets. Maybe now has become two wins. So now now maybe you got a little uh, door opening here uh, to sneak in or, or, or win more games than you thought. You know, so so that's that's encouraging too. But uh, you know, big one on Sunday for them. I mean, you don't want to go to zero and two. You know, I've said some crazy things here, but uh, that wouldn't have been O'Brien's decision on the fourth down. Would it? He he couldn't have made that call, would he, to go for it on fourth down? And that... I, don't, I don't know how they – I mean, I presume that, you know, the head coach comes up with all that at the end of the day. Yeah. I, I don't – you know, I, I mean, he could have – he could have said that he, you know, had a really good play and Bill could have yeah. believed him, you know. Like, I, I don't know if it's collaborative or, you know, I mean – uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's the president that pushes the button, right? Even if the general tells him to. So, um, <laughs> you know, but but it's an interesting thought for sure. I'm, I'm also Spe interested speaking of destruction. See. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Not that kind of button. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm I'm also interested to see what we got with this kicker. We haven't really seen him. You mentioned you know not going for the field goal there when they had a chance. I think what that was probably like a fifty yarder. Something like that, oh, yeah. three yarder. That was a long um, kick, yeah. I mean, I don't know how Nick Folk is doing over in Tennessee. I didn't really watch much of that game, but we got to let this kid kick the ball at some point. Um, don't really know what we got from him, so we'll see. Kicking is, as we know, is very important in this league. We're gonna have games where it's gonna come down to a game-winning field goal. So, right, like to see yeah. what we got with him. All right, gentlemen, we'll stop right there. A lot of good stuff here this week, uh, and we'll uh, be back. Got some big games to talk about next week on the podcast that are coming up this week. So, uh, gentlemen, thank you. Have a have a great weekend, and uh, we'll be reading uh, in the Salem News of what you guys are covering in the week ahead. Thanks, Bill. Yep. Take care.